So this here, this is the back end of the garden and this is really, I'm studying what I call the orchard. Bit of a joke really, because there's only, there's only th uh, three, three fruit trees in here, but nevertheless, it is an orchard. But even this deserves some sort of a, a, a kind of a, a feature. So what I did some time ago to really to segregate the two areas was to put a fence in. Now this is what we call the Lincolnshire rail, post and rail fence. And they're quite common around Lincolnshire. And this is because we're on hilly ground. So this section here actually allows the fence to go up and down. So if we're on a hill and it's in a valley, it doesn't matter. So to be quite honest, that, that actually improves the look of that border. So without that fence in there, that border would it be a little bit nondescript really. So that's one easy way of creating some sort of a feature. Now to introduce you into the orchard, I've also made it so that we've got some kind of an entrance. So you've got to make it look interesting really. You can't just leave it. You can't just have a, a sort of a walkway through as grass. It's better if you can introduce some sort of a gateway. So that's what I've done with this one. And as you can see, see it looks a lot more interesting. Just close that gate so you can see. So that gate swinging open well, that's great and what that does is is an open gate invites you in if you don't want people to come in you simply close the gate and that's kind of a, a a signal that you don't want people in there but again it's kind of a garden feature and you can see that i've put the same lincolnshire post and rail fence in front so that makes that look really interesting. Now one of the reasons I put the sheep bale feeders in was for the same reason, really. It's a, it's a bit of a feature, a bit of a man-made feature. And I always tell people that in gardens, we need man-made features. If we don't put features in, they just look like a boring old garden. And we get lots of plants, people out there who, who would simply just not waste that space. And they would just put in plants because that's what they want to do. But I like features because it gives somewhere for the eye to rest. It gives somewhere of interest say that sheep feeder was in the background I was at the other end of the garden I caught it in my eye it would make me want to come over to take a closer look at it now this path here is gonna I keep saying this but it is eventually gonna have all these quarry tiles and bricks old bricks actually put inside of it but again this is quite an interesting feature or will be an interesting feature it's got old reclaimed railway sleepers running down the edge. I've simply placed those in the soil. We've pinned them in. So nothing special. They're not concreted in or cemented in. They're just simply sat there on the soil, but, but they are kept in place by those pegs. And they serve to draw your eye down to the back of the cloister pergola, which is what they're doing. As you know, this is the floating deck. We sit on top of that deck and have a cup of tea. And it's really nice to find people congregate around there. And it's serving a purpose. And again, it looks good. Now I've introduced it into the border because I wanted you to feel like you was enclosed by plants, enclosed by flowers. And it's serving that purpose now. I also put in things like the cow drinkers, as you know, and other features to get people chatting and talking. And that works perfect for me. These are actually plant supports. And these are made by a local company, actually, called Lincoln's Plant Support. And they're great. They're just a little, a little bit of nothingness, really. Not, not they're doing the purpose they were intended for, but doing a different job altogether making it look interesting and i've also got some taller ones here and they just look good this is the cloister pergola and i've put another sheep bale feeder and i've included a perch into this one a little bit of interest and I've actually been brave enough to actually put it with another feature sometimes we can overdo features but sometimes features together can look very interesting and this does I love it originally it was set to be just just a singular structure going across the garden to break the garden in half which is another thing you should do a lot of as well try and try and break things up in the garden by creating features in the middle 
So we've added different things in it as well. And it's, it's okay being just a feature on its own and, it's, and it works absolutely fine like that. But I like to get a little bit more interest in there, which is why, as I said, the bale feeder's in there. And then we've made the, in, the inside of the cloister pergola look more interesting. And it's a seating area. And don't forget, we're waiting for things to actually take over on this, so the plants to take over. Now this is a this is a clematis and viticelli, and it's uh, called dark eyes, and it's looking great. And I never really did anything uh, to to make this go up the the actual structure itself. It simply climbed up itself. All I did was give it this mesh to climb up, and it's done just that. So this I've affectionately termed the polo. And that again is just another feature. Now the reason for the wood actually inserted there is because I wanted to give you a feeling of a feeling of seclusion once you're in here. Before the actual roses, etc., start growing all over the place. And that's what that does. Although it didn't need it. Because eventually remember at the back of that, that's going to be full of roses and rose growth and leaf, and you'll not really see into it. Now, I've left little gaps in here, so it's just a little, well, a little trick of mine that I do. I've left an open section here, and that's simply for interest on the feature. In that one, I've put a, an old stained glass, and that's a traditional piece that I made myself. And that's from a past life, as I often talk about. I was involved in the stained glass industry, and the, 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 well, more of the glass industry, really. And I made that myself, and it's... It's a representation of a flower, as you can probably make out, loosely. But anyway, so, so we've left them gaps to serve that purpose. It just looks interesting. It's a little bit better than enclosing the whole feature. And then we come on to the wildlife area with its dip pools. And these dip pools are working lovely, as you know. And if you've seen one of my other videos, you'll have seen that there was a tawny owl actually bathing in the right-hand side there at night time. I've got the wildlife camera in, so it picked it up. Now, again, we've used the Lincolnshire post and rail, and it looks great. And I actually have used this post, had these posts made by the same company that supplied the actual uh, rails and posts, and that's working well. But the, it all serves a purpose. It's all a feature. A simple thing like this tin just looks great. And it's just simply sat there. It can't be used for its original intended use, which was to collect water. It's no good for that anymore because it has holes in the bottom. This is the top now, but there you can see a hole there. So it can't contain water anymore unless I've decided to fix the problem. But I didn't want that. I've wanted it to, to be inside a, or at least inset in a border. So it looks great. And then I find things like this. A lot of my stuff is reclaimed. I'm quite fortunate to be able to come across these things. And this would have been a gate, but he's now acting as a backdrop. To the wildlife area so as you can see it's serving a purpose it looks great then the path leads us up so the shack did take some building it took a lot of building actually it's all handmade by myself and it has a deck to it and it has a boardwalk which looks really good so again it's another interesting feature within the garden now these plant supports were put into contain this helianthus which has a tendency to flop a little as you can see from there and it's the very reason i put it in i wanted some of it to keep doing the floppy bit but i also wanted these to stay upright and strong and this helianthus will do that if you can water it a lot as well i often say that water it heavily in its uh, early growing season and it will remain pretty rigid more points of interest more structures in here you can say or you could say that i'm i'm overdoing it but i'm not it's good to have lots of different and interesting little features. This is now named the Nook. And again, looks really interesting. And this is an entranceway, so it, it sort of attracts you into here. And from the top of the garden, it makes you want to walk through this gate, push through to see what's going on in here. And, and you walk through and people are surprised to find that actually there's a, there's a seat here that they didn't know, didn't, didn't know it was there. And this is a pig arc that I turned into what I call the Anson Arbor Shelter Seat and just a little bit of jiggling with that got it into this position and I made it over time again take your time on these things they're not hard 
most people could make this sort of thing. You'd pay a fortune for this in a in a shop, or you can't buy them in a shop. You can also use things like this. And this is just simply the top of a telegraph pole. And this telegraph pole was knocked down. Somebody took it to the skip and cut it, obviously cut it and put this section there. And I thought, brilliant, what a feature for a border. That little blackbird you see on top of there, just a simple metal, simple metal blackbird that I've nailed onto the top of that. And it looks great. I've left all the original features. This would have been a telephone, telegraph pole for telephone wires. Left the original climbing steps on it and it all adds interest. And then that's surrounded by these reclaimed, well, all, I guess all rocks are reclaimed, aren't they? That's the side of the shack. That looks really nice as well. So it's a feature, feature to draw the eye, to, to make interest. I keep repeating myself, but I want you to realize that these things are so important. A garden isn't a garden until you've got some sort of a man-made feature in there to add some sort of an interest. Another sheep bell feeder. And then we've got my signature piece, which is three telegraph poles connected by the rusty chains. And those rusty chains run all the way around it, as you can see, connecting it. And the owl on top. And that's set within the border. Now this is set to change pretty soon. And this is what I affectionately term the Flintstones Arch, but I'm going to put four more of those structures running towards me so that we've got a walkthrough. And that gives me the chance to put up wisteria, more roses, more clematis, and lots of other climbing plants. And that will be quite a structure and it'll make you walk through. And that will be a nice comforting feature that it'll make you feel really safe and secluded as you walk through it. And it'll also bring you down to the nook, which is where I'm stood at the moment. So I also put little features like this in. Uh, and then this is a big massive barrel that I brought from a previous property many, many years ago. And that just adds interest in the border and it's just simply sat there. There's no, no other reason than to have it there. That is, that is Kathy's Arbor seat and originally was intended to be a seat, a swing, rather a swing seat for a swing that I bought her, which is actually sat inside that one there, which where the bee carved onto it. And then we've made it look a little bit more interesting. Didn't just want a seat sat at the end of the garden. Why have a seat at the, sat at the end of the garden when you can create something like this? And I appreciate not everybody can make things like this, but it's not that hard to do but it really does sit lovely where I've put it. So these steps, just, just little steps, just to add interest again, but it's also there for a purpose. It brings you down onto this section of the garden. So each step I take, each step I take, and no pun intended, um, is, is there to, to serve a purpose. So that would bring you down here and take you down and as you can see, it will bring you down here and then down into the garden and back down to the cloister pergola. It's kind of guiding you. It's kind of a sign in the garden. And I buy natty little things like this, just a little feature or a little structure that was made by a blacksmith. And it's very, very nice. Looks great. The wheel in the background is simply a wheelbarrow, an old wheelbarrow wheel. That's that there. It was actually up at Grassy Bottom already, that. I found it at the back of the shed. So you can find little features to actually add in as well. And again, telegraph poles. I like using telegraph poles. So we've used them as a liner. We've used them to line the path. Very interesting they are too. And again, if you look up there, you can see again, more fencing. And that was originally a Leylandii dead hedge. It was dead already. And they actually interweaved Cotoniaster horizontalis in there, but it wasn't working. It was flopping. It just wasn't the right edge to put in. So I removed it and put that in instead. Now I will use this at some point. There's a little robin playing around here. 
we'll find robins playing around the gardens when we're in there digging. Anyway, I, di I divulge. Now this is a broken plant pot that I found, and it was actually in a wood next to a house, but in a wood nevertheless, broken. But I'm going to use that. That's going to be a bit of a feature. So don't dismiss these things because that can be used as a planter. And I've done other videos on planters, interesting planters. And that, I don't know what I'm going to put in there yet. But I have got one or two ideas. And um, we will deal with that in time. Now this is another pergola. And this pergola I had, I actually had the top bit made. I actually did all the cutting myself. I've shaped it. I simply bought the, the wood to do it. And I'd actually got the posts that are now being used on the floating deck. So the legs were different legs originally. But I had these four telegraph poles and I thought it would make it a lot more interesting if I, if I could do something a little bit different. And that's what I did. So that makes this look really interesting. And I do love this. And it has little fairy lights actually up in on the top as well. So at night time, it illuminates and just has these little twinkling lights. And it looks really nice. Sort of from anywhere in the garden, really. But planting is quite important still. Even though I wanted features in it, it's still important to put the, to get the plants right around them. And that grass, as you can see, that ostrich area, rich idii, is really looking good. And it doesn't look out of place with the large structure because it's a large plant and a large structure. This is a simple... It was a gatepost, you can see. The ironwork's already, or still there rather, still there. So it was simply chopped off and this, believe it or not, was thrown into a skip. The bottom was rotten, so I chopped the bottom off and now we've got a four and a half foot pole post in the garden, which is looking really nice. Just sat there to draw the eye, to look interesting. So it looks really good. And again, more drinkers. This was actually used in a donkey field, can you believe? And was no good anymore because it, it sprung a leak. I've I've repaired that since. Oh, it repaired itself, actually. Most leaks do over time. But uh, obviously, it was, the donkeys had been moved and it was no good anymore. It wasn't required, so took it. And it looks great. So this is an old millstone. I've got a couple of these. One down at the cloister pergola at the back end of it and this is quite a chunky thing and i've used it like that and we got the other feature which is these balls these shiny silver balls stuck in there as a sculptural effect to give it more interest and i think you'll agree that looks really nice so that's a few feature ideas for you we will end it there so we don't go on too long but again Features, features, why do we put them in? We put them in for interest. We put them in to get a, a bit of a, a talking point. Things to add interest in the garden. A garden with a load of plants in is great, but can become boring very, very quickly indeed if we don't add man-made features. Just one feature into a border can totally transform its look. Even if it's a simple placing of three posts as I've done with the with the owl sat on top there. It's so interesting. Okay, we'll uh, we'll end it there and we'll touch on the next one. Ta da!